If San Diego is your beginning and ending port, we have information about how to make your embarkation and disembarkation a little easier. I'm Troy, and this is the Port Lowdown. The San Diego cruise ship terminal is located along North Harbor Drive next to downtown. It's along the Embarcadero, a main boardwalk area featuring many restaurants and attractions. There are actually two docks, the B Street Pier, this is the city's largest cruise terminal and handles the majority of cruises, able to dock two ships at once. You'll most likely be using this one. There's also the Broadway Pier directly south. Smaller and newer, it can handle smaller overflow cruises. Getting there, you'll most likely either fly or drive. There's also trains. Flying is a breeze, since the airport is only 2.8 miles away from the port. Here is the domestic terminal one at the airport. From here, you go straight out and cross the street. After you cross the main traffic lanes, you'll pass three curb stand areas. The first is the courtesy shuttle stand for rental cars. The second is the stand for taxis. Third is the rideshare area, such as Uber and Lyft. All signage is clearly displayed and easy to follow. From Terminal 2, you need to cross over the bridges or the street to the parking structure. There's also a local bus, the 992, that takes you to the front of the port. The bus stops at various points along the airport at the sidewalk facing the terminal. It's $2.50 exact change one way. If you don't have exact change, you'll need a Pronto card, San Diego's mass transit ride pass. It'll be an extra $2 for the card in addition to the minimum fare load of $3. You can get the card at the Pronto card kiosk near the information desk or download the app. The bus does have luggage racks. However, if you have a large group or lots of luggage, it may not be practical. You can get an Uber for cheaper than the collective fare for the bus. But if you're single or with a small group and traveling light, it might be an option. Personally, I take the rideshare for the convenience and privacy. Either way, you're looking at a 10 minute drive to the port, traffic permitting. Heck, it's so close you could walk. but nah, maybe not. Then there's driving. San Diego is 122 miles south of Los Angeles and about 18 miles north of the Mexico border. The five freeway is the main artery north and south with the 163 coming southbound through Balboa Park and the 94 from the east. They all feed into downtown. From there, it's only a few minutes to the port along North Harbor Drive. On our trip, we plan to drop off passengers with the luggage, then park in a long-term lot. So we drove to the entrance and we missed it. It should be easy, right? But apparently we got confused since there's no official entry sign. But for the record, it's this. Look for the sign, then turn in. What you want is to go straight. Everybody must. Cars, buses, shuttles, everybody. People will be there to guide you in. Go straight, follow the guides, and you will be directed as far forward as possible for drop-off, where porters will be waiting to take your luggage. They have a good system to keep people moving, but it depends on everyone being alert and ready. 
To that end, expect a quick turnover of your bags when you step out and have some bills ready for tips. For parking, you cannot use the port's own parking lot, which is strictly for day use. There are plenty of long-term parking options, such as the airport garages and some of the surrounding hotels. For example, you can arrange long-term parking at the Wyndham San Diego Hotel, which is directly across the street. They offer long-term cruise parking as separate from the hotel. You don't have to stay there to use it. You do have to book months in advance. Needless to say, when the hotel is this close to the port, those spots are prime. Hotels fronting the port use an outside contractor for the parking lot. So you could arrange this separately, but the hotels won't make those arrangements for you. Also, there are no bargain packages of room and parking rates if you stay there. The other options, which we used, is the airport long-term parking lots, like Wally's or Aladdin. Ours was covered and convenient, with amenities like EV charging, vending machines, and even an ATM. They prefer if you drop off your bags beforehand and keep the two passengers per group to minimize crowding on the shuttle. For the train option, the Santa Fe Train Depot is a short 10 minute walk from the port if you choose to take Amtrak Surfliner, the coaster commuter train, or the local trolley. When you leave the train station, simply walk across Pacific Highway to North Harbor Drive, then turn right. In all cases, you'll need to drop off your checked luggage inside the port compound. Specifically, past the gate, inside the complex, and outside the port building. Basically, where the porters are picking up luggage from the cars. From there, you'll be directed past the terminal building to the outside front sidewalk staging area. It's not very big. It's also sectioned off when it gets busy according to ticket arrival time. You'll need to wait with your boarding pass at the ready when it's your time. Now here's the thing, don't come early, just be on time. The port doesn't open until 10.30 a.m. and the port authority is pretty strict about checking arrival times on boarding passes. Still, there's a slim chance that there'll be hardly anybody in line when you arrive and you might get a jump ahead, but that's pretty rare. Best to arrive when you're assigned time. So what about the surrounding area? The sidewalk is reasonable enough quality for wheelchairs and strollers, but rough in spots. There's a public bathroom about 50 yards south. Say you're still early or need a meal or a snack. Well, there's a vending machine right at the waiting area outside, just drinks and such. There are several restaurants, the closest being Carnita's Snack Shack, just past the public restrooms. North, on the same side of the street, is Portside Pier, with a variety of sit-down restaurants. There's also the Beach Hut Deli, about five minutes across the street. Also in the same area is Starbucks, Gelato and Friends. And Harbor Market for a variety of sundry items and liquor. Pretty large wine selection. Also directly across the street is Hazelwood's Deli and Cafe, where you can get sundry items, snacks, and deli sandwiches. On your turn, you'll enter the port building. The experience was fairly organized and smooth, but be prepared for various lines across a huge facility. There are bathrooms and side seating throughout. There are also vending machines deeper into the facility. Anyway, the whole thing took about an hour. So if you don't want to wait for the ship buffet, we recommend some snacks in your pocket and maybe some water. It's always a great feeling to finally be on the ship. You're so close to the airport, you can plane spot from it, which is pretty cool. By the way, if you find this video useful, hit us up with a like. We put out videos every two weeks about different cruise ports, so consider subscribing to get our latest reports. So let's fast forward to the end of your cruise, to disembarkation. If you've cruised before, disembarkation is all go, 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 hustling out to make way for the new passengers coming next. 
You'll be directed to a common staging area where your luggage will be organized by the ship's color or number codes. Signage is pretty clear and straightforward. Once out, you'll be directed towards the passenger pickup area or a prearranged bus. Those areas are isolated, of course. Buses on the right pick up towards the left. Pickup area is the same lot you came into to leave your bags with porters. This time, the lane closest to the building is for shuttles and taxis. The next lane across is for rideshare and private pickup. As before, workers are there to direct cars as far forward as possible. Frankly, this part was a bit chaotic as there was some confusion about where to wait along the line for a specific shuttle or ride. There isn't one. Just remember that all cars are being hustled forward, so that shuttle bus that stopped in one spot may not the next time around. So keep your eyes peeled and prepare to move along wherever your ride lands. There are benches along the outside of the terminal building if you need to collect yourself. There's also a battery of porta potties at the far end of the passenger pickup lot. They're pretty clean and they come with sinks. Anyway, both lanes, after picking up passengers, all converge at one exit. It can jam up sometimes, so there may be a wait getting out. Have you embarked and disembarked from San Diego port? Did you have any questions we didn't cover? Leave a comment below.